I'm the Commissar. This is Forged Alliance Forever. And you, yes you, are watching a 5v5 custom game on a generated map. Hello, you. Now, we have the North team and we have the South team facing off against each other. Let's meet the North team first. Out here on the flank position, this is Yoji, who is 2000 rated. He is the highest rated player in the game. He is Eon and he's in grey. To his right, we have Supreme AJ, who's 1400 rated, and Cybran, he's in red. Moving along, this fellow is Yerfmeister, who is 1600 rated, he's Eon, and he's in dark green. Tucked away in the corner, we have Caliber, who is 1500 rated, and Seraphim, and he's in baby blue, and in the air position, last but not least at the back, this is Megavirus, 1200 rated and UEF. He is in Mucus Brown. Facing off against them in the south, starting on the flank again, we have Psychoad, who is 1800 rated and he is Eon in pink. Moving along, in this unflattering Fico Brown, we have Kent 10, who is 1400 rated and UEF. To his left, this is Furfa in orange. Furfa is 1700 rated, he's Cybran. Tucked away in the corner and heading forward there to claim some more mixes, we can see local host, who is 1600 rated, he's Seraphim in yellow. And last but not least, for the south team in the air position, and you can see him walking forward there. This is Nizar89, who is 1300 rated, and he is UEF. Now the map, look at this map, this is a smattering of mexes everywhere, with a few of them clustered up into expansion, so map control is going to be very important here. Only a moderate amount of reclaim, most of it round the cliffs on the outside and a little bit round the cliffs in the middle, so nothing huge to contest right there. It looks to be about 15 kilometers across. Now that's quite a lot of labs coming out from Kent at this early stage. Is he just sending them to be guards at the moment? Yes. This looks more aggressive here from Furfa. He is sending across a tank to guard this expansion. And Yoji has already got somebody on the way, but is it his comm? Yes, it is. His comm is on the way here. So that little tank might meet an unfortunate demise at the hands of Yoji's comm. Still more laps coming out from... Kent. It looks like he might be planning quite a big raid with those fellows. Let's see if he does. I've been seeing quite a bit more lab play recently in the early game than I used to. It used to be like labs would just send one to harass and scout and that's about it. But now we're seeing them being used in greater numbers. I wonder why that is. Either way, this is a force of no fewer than five labs running forward from Kent. Maybe it'll get something done, or maybe it'll just run straight into Yerf's com and die. Also, we have early aggression out from Loco. He sent a bomber to try and pick off some of Yerf's, Yerf's Yoji's units, but it's been seen. However, kills a lab, so it could be worse. Those poor labs over here are just running into Yerf's com and dying as we said they might. The attack bomber from Loco has seen the com for Yoji. He's going to try and pick up this engineer, but with the com here, it won't slow them down much. That said, he does get the engineer, so it could be worse. I will be sending it over here where the engineers would need to be reinforced all the way from back here by Yoji. However, I can see that looking from above the map and local can't. And we've got another lab raid coming round the left here. Left? Right. Whichever side. Right. From Psycho. And at the moment it's just denying this mix, but it might get something done here. Ooh, 
good drop from that bomber picks up three of Yoji's NGs. And sure, they're in the base, it can easily be replaced, but three NGs is quite a bit of expenditure. I think the bomber missed there, we just hit somewhere there, and it's going to get shot down by this AA and this Inti. But still, I think it paid for itself. Meanwhile, Psycho has caught the NG with his labs over here preventing Calibre from expanding to these mexes and getting this reclaim at least for a while and so that's pretty nice for South Team as well. Lots of gun upgrades going down if we take a quick overview of the map. We have Loco, AJ, Furfa and Yerf all on gun upgrades. Neither does Com is far forward as air players often do. I always do that when I'm the air player come straight forward and help whichever team on the front line whichever team on the front line whichever side on the front line of my team is looking like it needs it the most but when I do that I usually get gun and Nizar has not done that he's just chosen to wander in naked and flap his exposed comparts into AJ's face or into AJ's spam in this case and it's working AJ's spam is retreating so you know could be worse and Megavirus is out here doing a similar job on the other side and this is quite nice he's bringing in engineers to pick up the reclaim that he's making as he pops off the tanks from Kent this might be a little bit bold though and I suspect he'll just get reclaimed or shot by the NGs from Kent. And indeed he does. The drops are being pung and further sending his come across to deal with it while his spam comes up to join Nizar here. AJ's got his gun though and he's bringing his come forward. Nizar will have to be careful. That's a decent amount of spam from AJ and he's got a gun comp. However, so has Furfa, and if Furfa can come in to help, that might make all the difference. Checking over on the right, these labs are still being pretty brutal for Psycho. They have they haven't actually denied these yet though, they could have just moved a tiny bit to get those NGs and now these tanks from Calibre will kill the labs and Calibre will finally lock down this area. But Nizar and Furfa have engaged AJ with decent amounts of spam on each side, so we'd better watch this and see how it goes down. However, look at this! This is raiding from Loka and it's doing immense damage to Yoji's eco. He's picked up one, two, three, four mechs, he's about to get a fifth, and he's got more coming in around the back. Oh, make that six mixes. Yoji does have T2 out, but it's going to have to catch these things up, and it's now getting into the back end for Mega as well. But back to the fight here. Nizar and Furfa are retreating. Furfa into the yellow. AJ has a decent amount of spam, but he's stopping to reclaim. That's why I don't think he'll get a com kill with the spam coming in from Furfa and so he may as well grab what he can and get out. Furfa putting up a PD here to which he can fall back. However, Loco has engaged Yoji on the ground and Yoji has T2 so Loco actually might be in trouble here. Good thing I checked the cross. In fact, Loco might be about to die to Yoji who's got the gun and T2. The Blazers do it. Boom! Down goes Loco, our first ejection from the game at 9 minutes and Psycho will inherit. If I was Psycho, I might consider sending it to Furfa, who is almost as high rated as Psycho and in that position. And indeed he does. Meanwhile, we have Yerf's com with gun and extra range coming in on Kent. Kent has T2 and is staying back here. He, he needs to fortify if he's going to make that T2 pay because that's a lot of spam and an extra range gun com from Yerf. And as we all know, unless there's a lot of preparation from the T2 com, gun com beats T2 com. Now Nizar is getting the upgrade that I think he so desperately needs and it's good to see that. But look at this push on the 
right hand side. Yerf with his extra range gun com and spam and tanks coming in from caliber. Kent is going to lose a lot here. He's already lost one mech, he's going to lose two more NG radar, might lose these unless these blazes from Psycho are enough to hold it off. And sure, blazes are better than T1 spam, but are they that much better? Meanwhile, Kent's got one T2 PD up. He's almost got another, but his spam might be enough. And with this production here as well, he is driving Yerf back. In fact, he's now outnumbering Yerf, but I don't think he's got enough actually to threaten Yerf. On this side, AJ, Furfa and Nizar are at it again, and as before, AJ has the more spam, but Furfa and Nizar now have two gun comms compared to AJ's one. However, Nizar is getting surrounded, he's in range of AJ's comm, he will have to be very careful. Could we about to see Nizar going out? He's down into the red. But I think he's going to make it. I think that Nizar escapes and it's now fur for fit five facing off against AJ. That was a bit of fur for facing, bit of a tongue twister for me. Five for first and first for facing fur fur. Anyway, um Furfa has brought in Jester gunships to increase the pressure on AJ. AJ does have a single sky slammer here which will clear up the, the justice in the end but with Furfa on more health and with a gun upgrade this could be a problem for AJ. Yoji is being held back here by Furfa spam but his mass of blazes is increasing and I think Yoji might break through there soon as AJ retreats. Furfa carefully stealthing what he's doing with these deceivers. Now it feels to me as if Yoji might have enough blazes to form a critical mass and just wipe over here now. Furfa is massing Ilshis down here and those Ilshis would definitely beat those blazes. Blazes? Blazes. Ilshis are great. You've heard me sing their praises more than once, but in combination with Yoji's Duncom might be difficult. And if I were nicer, I'd consider coming across here to help out as soon as I finish Nano. On the other side, Yerf has changed his tack and is using mobile lunt missile launchers to attack Kent. But Kent with his T2 comm is putting up TMD and he's bringing in his spam to try and herd Yerf away. But this is all just light assault bots and a gun comm will easily clear up that. That said, there aren't many actual tanks in here, so the lighter sort bots might get some work. No, they're not. Look, they just go pop. Poor old labs. And furthermore, Kent is sending in these mongies to try and drive away the MMLs, and I think in that regard, they will be more than successful. So it looks like North team have just slightly more map control, but on the left, that's a lot of Ilshis. Has Yoji overextended and on the right, although we have two gun comms to one, there are Harbies in here for Psycho. He's got the T3 land, he's got T3 land out, he's got tech to a point defense, so that is just hitting hitting the ground. and he's losing his harbies. However, the Ilshis that Calibre brought along are nearly dead. Yoji is falling back, but I don't think he's actually under threat. He's got enough vet and the ability to overcharge, and he's got a point defense to fall back to. However, Psycho has turned the tables as more harbies come in, and Calibre might actually be in danger. Mega and Calibre are falling back. But with these T2 point defences, Calibre's into the red. Boom! Down he goes. Calibre is our second ejection and we're back to even Stevens at 4v4. 
Meanwhile, how's Yoji doing? Yoji is... Oh, he's fine. Look at that. He can easily see off those Ushis, and he does. But the Harbies have utterly shredded poor old Calibre's units, as well as his Com and Mega is wisely running away. Now we can see here that Yerf is retreating in the face of these mongies with his MMLs. Well, I say that, but immediately he sweeps around a bit. However, I think these forces are going to push him back a little bit. Now, meanwhile, how's everyone doing on Eco? Now, North Team are actually pretty far ahead, 60 or 70 ahead as we speak. And with about even map control, that does seem to suggest that they're doing quite well. How are they doing individually? Mega? Overspending on math a little bit, but who am I to complain? He's got a decent income, and so could be worse. Yoji? Brilliant balance. Unsurprisingly, as he's the highest rated player in the game. Also very good from Yerf. Supreme actually has a bit too much mass there. Although he hasn't got much storage, and it looks like he's spending it now, so... He's got to be careful though, he's on the breadline for power. Maybe that's why he wasn't spending so much. As for the South team, Psycho also very well balanced for power and pretty good for mass. And he can afford to be a bit stingy with his power build because he's got a lot in storage. Furfa, pretty good balance in general. Nizar, also very good. They were close to the bread on power, though it just popped up, and I strongly suspect that he might have just finished... Yeah, look, he's just finished a couple of T3 pigeons for his air grid, and last but not least, Kent. South Team, all of them seem to be having a little bit of um, being stingy with power. A couple of T3 pigeons would probably help with that. Meanwhile, though, what's going on? We have... Mega defending with his Com and Broadswords against a little Harby raid from Psycho. And on the other side, we have Furfa and Nizar currently just posturing against Yoji. But Furfa is bringing Bricks in to join his Ilshis, and that could make the difference. That's a good combination of tech, Bricks and Ilshis. Now, if I'd been planning better, then I would have recorded this game, say, four days earlier, and I would have done it as a election prediction special here in the UK. We've just had a general election, but it wouldn't have been much of a prediction special as everybody knew that Labour were going to stomp the Tories after the immense mess that the Tories have made of everything in the last 14 years. I'm amazed they lasted that long. However, Political commentary aside, do, hey, doesn't Guile usually do an election prediction um, cast? I didn't see one this time round. Maybe I should have jumped the gun. Oh, well, too late now. An election post-diction aftercast isn't quite the same, you know, quite the same ring to it as an election prediction forecast. So, maybe it's just as well. I hear some shots. Who's shooting what? Well, those bricks from Furfa are getting in range of Yoji. Maybe we're about to see a fight. But a big push from AJ is coming, smashing through here. And what does Kent have that can stop it? He's got a few mongies, but this is... This is Loyalists. Oh, there is a brick being sent sideways from Furfa and that will help defend but this is quite a large T2 army however also over here we have to worry about Yoji attacking here and I also see a fight out on the other side this is madness here on the left there are broadswords in from Nizar defending and these bricks are trying to catch up from Furfa but Kent will be losing mixes on this side Psycho is defending, and that those Harbies are shooting. That might be enough to drive away the Othiums from Yerf. Yerf agrees. Yerf is falling back, but he's lost quite a lot. That said, Psycho has lost his shield. 
he's taken a bit of damage and these are now going to be cleared up as Kent brings in Percy's but he has lost some mexes and Yoji is coming in against Furfur. Now Furfur has bricks, he has ill, she's all very nice and there's only a few harbies for Yoji but he's got shield support and he's got a lot of T1 spam supporting and he's got his gun shield com and Furfur looks like he's going to be falling back but Furfur has completed a monkey. Now as I often say you're going to see monkeys first more often than not when they're cyber in the game because monkeys are the cheapest land experimental. I think Atlantis is cheaper. Can't remember. It shows you how often I build an Atlantis. But Yoji has fallen back a bit. And holy cow, I just saw the eco. North Team's eco is ahead by 300 per tick. That's madness. It's mainly in the hands of Yerf, who has... He is sitting on Calibre's old base, to be fair. But he's got considerably more than Furfa, who is sitting on Loco's old base. So, there is that. And with this huge eco lead, what are the North team actually going to do? Are they going to convert it into something? Looks like we have a snipe attempt here on Yoji. In come the broadswords from Nizar. And Yoji has the personal shield, he has mobile shields to hide under. He's got a lot of stuff to hide, but there's only this one damaged redeemer in terms of anti-air as far as I can see. He's pinging desperately and the redeemer is being focused. Oh, there's also a single sky summer. The Redeemer was taken out, and where is Mega with his air defense? There it is, I see the shadows coming in. However, Yoji is down to 6,000 hit points. Is he going to fall any further? No, he's not. The broadswords are taken out, and he's got enough to run away, but that monkey might think differently. I think the broadswords are taken out, there's still one there. He went down to 5,700 hit points, and he is falling back as the monkey comes in. The monkey's being seen. Yoji's going to have to get out of there. Over here, we have a push from Kent, who is charging forward with his Percy's and with his Mongies against these Harbies from Yerf. I think he's charging forward. A bit of back and forth there. How is Yoji? Well, Yoji looks like he wants to get out of there. Is he going to make it? The, the transport's taking fire. And it goes down to the yellow, but Yoji is on the transport and Yoji is safe. Kent is also pushing, but has Furfa been caught out by AJ? This is a lot of bricks and a couple of loyalists as well and Furfa's com is all on his own. Furfa is losing his TP Lantida. He's just gonna die here isn't he? Furfa's just gonna die as he gets shot in the face by a bunch of bricks and loyalists. Boom! Look at that explosion as Furfa goes up in a big bore of fire. And we're now four in the north versus only three in the south. However, those three in the south have this. They have this force from Furfa, which um, Psycho has just inherited, and it's charging into Yoji's base. Now, Yoji has had time to put up a bunch of PD, but the monkey is smashing through it, and he's taking out Yoji's power. Yoji building more PD back here, but he's going to lose a lot to this attack. This is very good work from the combination of Furfa and after his death Psycho. He's losing Mexes. He's losing so much. We do have a monkey here coming in from AJ. And with the amount of damage this monkey has taken, that's going to be enough to clean it up. But it will clean it up only after so much damage has been done to Yoji's base. Look at this. This is brutal. In fact, 
it's so brutal that South team are now in the lead on Eco after just a second ago. We saw the North team having a 300 lead. The monkey goes down for Psycho. What a hero monkey. And the remaining groups are just trying to get some damage done on this monkey. But it's not going to be enough and the defence will be complete. But there used to be a base there. There used to be a base for Yoji right there. What's happened to it? Well, actually, that was a rhetorical question because I can tell you what's happened to it. A bunch of bricks and a monkey happened to it. And the air cover for the attack that Nizar was providing retreats as AJ brings in bounces because he doesn't want to lose fighters unnecessarily. Psycho finishes a GC. Nizar and Yerf both start experimenters of their own. Oh, uh, that was pretty intense. I can see some broadswords sauntering around here, but if Nizar's on point, which he isn't, come on. What are these boys doing? My dudes, my dudes, there are, there are gunships over there. You should be up there. And you should be fighting. I'm going to blame this one in particular. This one right here. He's at fault. He's the squadron leader. And he's the one who's just saying, No, we can, we can sit on the ground. It's fine. No enemy gunships anywhere. Don't know who told you. But the gunships have got bored and thrown away anyway. So maybe nice I right, made the right call there. Who can say? A small force of Kent that was tentatively advancing has been smacked aside and now we have this to worry about. Lots of Othiums, lots of Harbies and most importantly a GC. There's a bit of T3 here but that's quite a lot of Percy's. But if I were Kent I would be scared of that. That GC... Okay now I would be less scared because this is a GC from psycho and it's coming forward and it's about to open fire on the GC of Yerf. Come on my dude stop dancing and start shooting I'm trying to get nice cinematic shots here and you're just messing around. There we go the great big laser faces open fire. So how, how's the battle actually going? Now those Percy's are going to make all the difference I think and here come those broadswords from Nizar and look at that, Yerf's GC is just being mashed by the combined firepower of Percy's GC and broadswords and I think that this entire force from Yerf is just going to be a delicious mass dump for Ted to pick up that said, this GC might be about to go down. Indeed it is. And look at it falling to its knees. No! Thud. Down it goes. Oop, I see some shenanigans going on over there. Now over here we have AJ coming in with that monkey that was so crucial to, I would say Yoji's defence, but it wasn't really defence. It was more of death, or at least having all his eco crushed wandering around all alone in what's left of his base. Over here though, Psycho hasn't got any AA in this expansion, and so He's just losing it to a couple of gunships, a couple of broadswords from Mega. However, the air fight has gone down. Who's going to win it? This could be crucial to the outcome of the game. It looks like Mega is actually taking the air fight. Out comes a Redeemer on this side. The broadswords for Nizar are going for the monkey, but AJ seems to have brought a decent amount of flak, and the broadswords are slowly dropping out of the sky. Flak there, bounces there. However, I feel like there's enough firepower here combined to take it down the monkey. 
So the monkey is coming forward, but it's in the red. And these bricks for Psycho are massing to try and stop it. Does If Nizar comes in with his gunships, he's got to worry about quite a lot of flak supporting the monkey. And Psycho might actually be about to lose a decent chunk of his T3 production there. The monkey opens fire. Psycho, however, does complete to a mega, so there will be there will be defense against the monkey. How much will Psycho lose before it comes in? Some bricks come sauntering up. The monkey's already back into the yellow, and it takes out two. It can't see those, can it? Those are just slightly out of its vision range, and that monkey's just gonna die. Okay, well, good riddance to that monkey, I guess. And the Mega is here, and it's coming forward. AJ, however, has been bringing in more bricks, and there are mexes that Psycho could still lose before the Mega can clean all of this up. We do have this chicken here from Yerf, but with this number of Percy's and Shields and with this GC here from Psycho, I think it's wise for Yerf to fall back a bit. And look at these, the bricks are just getting in, these gunships from Mega are just uh, thrown away, not even a sacrifice, but the, these bricks, look at them, two bricks and an anti-air just scuttling into the back, and these T3 Mexes for Furfer are completely unprotected. He's going to get some decent damage done here. And the Mega thinks it's not worth chasing them. And it, the Mega is very slow. We'll have to come all the way back here and forward again. Maybe he's going to rely, oops, on this monkey to come and get it. But Nizar is sending a gunship. And I think that one bouncer won't be enough to stop that broadsword. However, over here, we have a nuke silo completed for Psycho. It isn't being heavily assisted yet, but it's it's building. What's he going to do with that? Well, he's probably going to launch a nuke with that, but you knew what I meant. Where's he going to nuke with it? We'll have to find out. Now this is actually quite a big force coming in from AJ and Yoji. It's got only one XP, it's got this monkey, but that's a lot of harbies and a reasonable number of loyalists coming in in support. And there's this one mega with just a few bricks to support it from Psycho. And one on one, obviously, the mega will be to monkey, maybe even two monkeys, but with this amount of spam in support of it, Psycho's going to have to be pretty careful. And you also have to get some scouting because of course the monkey is going to be projecting its stealth field. Looks like we also have a push being prepared here by Kent. He has a fatty, three GCs and an awful lot of Percy's and mobile shields in there as well as some Harveys. Look at that, that is a huge force and I reckon Kent might have enough actually to push however we've got to look over here because over here we have those harbies coming in on the mega the mega is backing up good micro there from psycho but it's being swarmed by harbies it's got a gunship firing on it from mega psycho does bring in a monkey just saying the Mega has a gunship firing on it from Mega made me realise how ambiguous Mega is in this game. Curses. However, that aside, there's also though a monkey in from AJ and we could be about to see quite a turnaround here if AJ can... AJ is also pushing in over here. Down goes the 
Mega for Psycho. But down goes the Monkey for AJ. And are these Harbies and Bricks going to be enough to take out the Monkey for Psycho? I think that Monkey's going to survive. And anyway, there's another Monkey coming in. But check out what I can see on the minimap there. On the left we have this GC and Kent's got nothing to stop it. Sure there's a monkey all the way over here but this is going to get massive damage done on poor old Kent before Nizar and Psycho are able to stop it and the reason Kent has no defences going on over here. Look at this. This is a huge charge. There are Corsairs coming in from Yoji but they're barely taking down its shield I think they're just going to be shredded before they get another pass due to the immense amounts of flacken here and indeed they are meanwhile this quad of chickens is going to smack down those the quad of GC is going to smack down those chickens one of them's already dead however Poor old Kent, his main base has a GC in it from Yoji, and he's he's losing quite a lot. His power is being targeted. The chickens continue to die for Yurf as the GCs continue to do the damage, and he's still got this huge swarm with it. But how long can he last? Oh, that's irritating. There we go. When the GC is smashing down all his power. As long as this fatty can keep kiting, Yurf can keep doing damage. Ah, but now there's a GC from Psycho on this. Oh, look at the sort from Mega, though. Idiots! Every game! Every! He says. Maverick clone, says Caliber. Now, as you know, Maverick is famous for his sort. That GC from Yoji finally goes down, but look at the damage it's done to Kent's base. Several Mexes, several T3 P gens. That is actually pretty brutal. Now it feels like Kent might actually be running out a bit of XP's, but he's only got this one GC left in there versus a GC and a fatty for Yurf, but this is still a huge amount of T3 units and it might still get work done. And of course he has also got this fat boy, albeit minus shears, now that he's lost all his power thanks to that GC coming in back here and this is beginning to look actually quite bad for North team they've still got an eco lead of 400 make that 500 that's 400 that's a huge eco lead but Psycho launches his nuke and what's he gonna do with it is it gonna come and back up this force is it going elsewhere we'll keep an eye on it in a moment but I think we have to watch out here because I think that yeah he's just he's just not running away and there's a literal GC on his doorstep. He's okay. He's got two, and that GC might die. The Earth has his com pung, and the GC focuses it. The Earth, my dude, you have to react. Boom. The Earth is our next ejection from the game, bringing it down to three v three. And meanwhile, Yoji was the target of the nuke, and boom. That, he didn't have a new defense. That was Yoji's main base going up in smoke. I mean, he's still got a little bit of mass over here. And this is T3 fully ringed with, fully ringed with um, what you call them, uh, mass gens and everything. But that was an immense loss for Yoji. That said, North team are still ahead in Eco, so um, they have been doing extremely well. And of course, Yoji's just picked up all that stuff he inherited from Yurf, but that was a lot of damage for poor old North team. And at the moment we've got Mega and Yoji just trying to get the reclaim from here, of which there must be a decent amount, but it's all down here, and there are these bricks coming forward from Psycho, and as if that weren't enough, we've got a Monkey, a Mega, and a GC walking forward. Ghost Rat Yoji and it's a win, says Furfa to Nizar. And we have a raid coming round the side from Psycho on this side, but this is a two GCs, a fat boy and a large amount of T3. That might be a bit of overkill to be honest, and he but he might want to have more defending up here, but you know. 
It's getting the work done. Lol. Fucking noobs. It's air. Zero air. Zero units. Mega Virus is not happy with this. Nothing. He Me Mega is doing a good Maverick impression. I'll give him that. But we have another nuke out, and it's coming f for the old base of caliber over here and there won't be any nuke defense make a satellite to scout says furfertinizer and you know that's the best use of a, of a novak satellite scouting am i right our north team still going to be ahead in eco after this nuke two hits uh, I think I saw Co um, South Team actually take the lead for a moment there, and the nuke strikes, smashing up T3 mexes, and that is some brutality f against the poor Northern Team. Meanwhile, we have a couple of monkeys trying to get in there, but the Fatty and the Mega are more than enough to stop them. Ooh, Calibre's joining in the fun. He says, no air, idiot. Complaining to their air player, who is, of course, Mega. No air? You can feel the shock in his voice. No air? I tried fight with T4, you idiot. Oh, I'm loving this. And while the sort goes down, the XBs from Psycho come pushing in onto Yoji. Been too much on TV gunships. Yev says, "Oh, Maverick, I knew that was you. I, I, I don't think it's Maverick. Um, I'll check and comment down there if it was, but I'm pretty sure it isn't." Well, my whole oppo made only ASFs. Cretin. Now that's an that, that's an in interesting word there because in here in the UK it's pronounced cretin, but I hear Americans pronounce it cretin. A cretin is, of course, somebody from Crete, but. That aside, how are we doing with this push? There is a... Those are only Ilshis, but the Ilshis... Oh, but okay, there's a big horde of bricks there. And of course, the main thrust of this attack, as it were, is the three entire XBs charging in. Now, as the attack closes on Yoji's main base, and we see here that Yoji has a nuke of his own, but it's nowhere near loaded, we see that Yoji inherited a decent amount from Yerf and Calibre and he's pushing in over here but there's multiple XP's here from Psycho which need to come forward there's a fat boy here down goes the, the, the monkey there whose monkey was that? could have been either of them, didn't see there's, but there's more coming up here, there's bricks coming in I don't think this is going to be enough this fat boy has been horrifically mismicrode and is going to die but is there enough from Yoji? Meanwhile, point defences. Bricks. The five monkey is taking fire and will probably go down when it engages this monkey. Pop. Indeed it does, but there's still a Mega and a GC. In comes this Mega from the back, brought in by AJ, and AJ has another Mega. Maybe there's enough to stop it. Will it be in time? And on this side, we can see that the GCs are actually getting quite deep into Kent's front line, but thanks to his vast horde of ravages, the multiple GCs from Psycho, I don't think that Yoji is going to be able to break through on this side. But... Yoji's com is all the way back here, and do you know what I see? I see a bunch of gunships from Nizar coming in. And Psycho pushes back, having broken the attack of Yoji on this side, and there is no way Yoji's going to make it. After all Mega's complaints about air, what's he doing? Where's his ASFs? There they are. But they're not in time. Too little, too late. Boom! Yoji, the highest rated player in the game, is detonated by Nizar's air. Ouch! 
and look at the damage that the attack ha has inflicted. It, it's been driven back. There's still a couple of Ilshis down here, and these Megas from AJ are pushing forward on these Megas from Yoji. AJ is producing more all the time, but it just feels like they're now on the back foot and it's going to be hard to make a comeback. This defence will succeed though, just about. AJ on this side has inherited Yoji's stuff, but he's going to have great difficulty stopping all this. And over here, the one of AJ's Megas goes down, but there's still a Mega Tool Monkeys and this Mega is going to die. The sort is continuing from Mega. <laughs> nice arty, and you have same rating. No T3, no AA, no Shields, no T4, no AA. He's Maverick's brother, says Calibur. Yoji, you suck hard. Mav, stop crying. Oh, look at this. The sort is really going down. And while the sort is going down, these strat bombers are building up. I think we're going to see a sniper attempt either on AJ or on Mega as the game progresses. And look at this. It's now South Team. 500 eco ahead, that's a 33% lead, make that a 40% lead, and the nuke again goes for Calibur's old base where there's a heap of T3 mexes and this feels like the writing's on the wall. Classic, says Mega sarcastically. AJ starting a laser, but my friends, this is a laser of desperation, not a laser of strength. Boom, the nuke hits. And Mega continues his sort in Russian. As the GCs come in from Psycho, and they're going for Mega, but Mega doesn't give them the pleasure. He control Ks. And he is going to explode. Is the first bomb even going to hit him? He does actually take some hits from the bombs, but boom, his suicide takes effect. AJ inherits everything, but what has he got left to inherit? Look at this. He's got a base that's got four GCs in it. He's got fat boys coming in from the front and megaliths. He's building the teleporter. He might even finish it. But can he snipe out three comms? before he is himself destroyed as Psycho finishes Arty, which will soon be raining down on his base. Will he be spotted by the strats and just smashed before he finishes? Are you expecting a comeback? Do you think it's going to be a comeback, my dudes? Do you think it's going to be a telly major comeback? As he sends waves after waves of scouts out to see if he can see where he can go, but they're all just getting shot down. And he's charging his teleporter. There. He's coming into the back of Nizar's air grid. An air grid which is producing strats and broadswords. So is he going to survive long when he pops out there? I'm I'm not 100% convinced that his life expectancy is super high. Especially when it's seen and pung just before he appears. And his laser fires. He's getting into the air grid, but the broadswords are firing at him. And he's not queued up a teleport out. In fact, he starts walking. And this is his walk into Valhalla as he gloriously walks to his death in battle and is taken up to Stilvoko or whatever um, warrior afterlife you happen to believe in. Oh, what a game, my dudes. North Team had an eco lead for the majority of the game there, almost all of it. But it wasn't enough. They didn't turn it into stuff. A couple of crucial air wins for Nizar had a good help there. Excellent attrition from Psycho and, and from Kent just eventually led their team to victory. Tell me whether you think North Team could have swung it at any point by putting the eco into something. Maybe they needed early investment into nukes or 
even gay men dislike a male? Tell me in the comments below. And while you're down there, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and obey. I am the Commissar, and I will see you next time.